Hi everyone, in this video I'll walk you through how you can generate random numbers using Desmos, how you can use histograms on those random numbers, and how you can use normal distributions and basically any statistical distribution in general. If you're new here, I'm a certified math and physics teacher in Ontario who holds a master's degree in statistics. Okay, so let's dive right into it. This is Desmos, a graphing calculator, made a bunch of videos, so maybe check out uh, the playlist for Desmos and all the timestamps and you can put, it will be in the description below and you can put your questions below as well. So the first thing we're gonna cover today is distributions because we kind of need that for the other two things. But uh, let's say we have normal distribution, uh, distribution, so normal dist, you, you have it here. Or alternatively, if you go on the keyboard at the bottom and then you go in functions, you have trig functions and statistics, you're gonna have distributions there. So there's Poisson, there's the T distribution, binomial, uniform distribution, you have a bunch of things, right? And then one thing that's particularly relevant to the second part of this video is gonna be the random function, which generates random function. So normal dist is the normal distribution, and you'll see what I mean by that is uh, the normal distribution, let's say we want a mean of M and a standard deviation of S, by default it's zero and one, but we can add sliders and I'll put a card to learn how to work with sliders. But basically you saw what I did, I just wrote M and S and then it gives you the option to add sliders. And then this tells you that you can just slide the mean and it moves or you can increase the standard deviation as well, like very low standard deviation makes the normal curve really high and really wide, like high standard deviation makes the curve wide, okay? So how about we go with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of three. And then the nice part is that you can just click the zoom fit, like the, the magnifier with a little plus sign below the normal distribution. And then you have the following. So how can we interpret this? Well. If you look, our mean is 10 and the highest, like the highest height is around 10. So that means that most of the values are around 10. The Y axis is density in this case, but that's not really the point of this video and I'll explain it a bit further as well. So the highest point is 10. So that means most of the values are around 10 and the standard deviation is a measure of how much they vary around 10. So a standard deviation of three it always has to be a positive number, means that like uh, there's an empirical rule or a 68, 95, 99 rule, something like that, that says that like most, like 68% of the data are gonna be plus or minus one standard deviation. So that if the, the, the mean is 10, so that would be plus three, so that would be 13 and minus three, so that'd be seven. So that means 68% of the data is expected to be between seven and 13. If you go to standard deviation, so between four and 16, yes, that adds up. Like 95% of the numbers are gonna be between four and 16, theoretically, right? And you can also do like the, the cumulative probability. So from negative infinity to four, for example, the it, theoretically we only have a 2% chance, 2.2% chance that a number is less than four. So if you do this times two, like you see that it's like relatively close to five, right? Like there, there's not that good odds that the numbers are outside of four and 16. And if you increase that to three standard deviation, so like essentially it would be between one and 19, then like that, that's even a lot lower. Like you're, you're basically 99% confident that it's gonna be between one and 19. Like there's not that much area at the tail. So essentially, Less height means not as likely to have a number there and more height means more likely. And you're gonna see this, how this is directly related to random numbers. And now we're in the second part of the video where we talk about generating random numbers. So let's say we want to generate random numbers. Again, we can go at the bottom and hit function, go to distributions and go uh, random. You'll, we'll also use the uh, histogram later on, but let's say we go random. You can also just type R A N D O M. That'll work. We right now by default it generates one random observation, 
and like from a, a distribution. But what we're going to do here is we're going to generate it from our uh, distribution here. So where I'm just going to copy paste control C control V. Now I have this thing again, but I'm just going to do dot random and then see how it generates like a new value, which is from distribution, this distribution. So the value that it gener generated is 11.6. And that makes sense because it's close to 10, right? So we're going to generate n values from this thing. And I'll show you another magic trick after. So n is going to be it's only integer. So how about we put, uh, let's go 10 for now and, and it's integer. So in steps of one, and we let's say we only want it to go in the forward direction. So here right now, it's a one element list. If I generate two, then it's a two element list and so on. So how about I plot these points so you see them, right? So the way to plot them, uh, let's say I assign them to a list. So I'll put capital X is equal to this. That's a, my list now. So I'll just do capital X and I'll plot them on the X axis. So the height is zero. So now you can see how these are my points. Maybe I'll put them as uh, open points. It might be a bit nicer here. Let's increase the transparentness. So 0 0.6 and something like that right you can you can do lines you can do you can do a bunch of things but you get the idea um and now if i generate other points you see that they hover around 10 but most of the points here are actually on the right side of 10 which is kind of interesting right like it's it depends on statistics so one thing i'll show you is right now we have 10 random observations you can also set a seed so like this number is a seed of one, this is a seed of two, this is a seed of three, it generates random, uh, like a new sample, right? It generates again, it kind of like rolls the dice again, for all your 10 observations. So I'll create a slider. So s and then I'll, I'll underscore uh, EED for seed, and then it says add slider. When you do underscore, it automatically creates a subscript. If uh, you don't want to do that, you can also go in your ABC and then you have like the subscript thing here. So you could do S and then click that thing and it would work as well. So, okay, so we have the seed, I have my slider and now you can see that as I change my seed, I essentially randomly pick 10 new observations that are normally distributed around 10 with a standard deviation of three. So changing the seed changes the sample, okay? So let's just do a seed of one is fine. 10 observations. And now let's talk about histograms and how they connect with normal distributions. So now we're in the third part of the video. So again, I, I mentioned if you go on keyboard functions, you should see visualizations, you can do histogram, you can also just type histogram, I was in in the wrong line here. So I'll just type histogram histo gram open the bracket and it says the data set and the bin width so let's just input the data set the data set is my random points right so i'll just put x and now you can see that i have a histogram so you can see that between 3.5 and 4.5 i have one observation between 4.5 and 5.5 i have one observation between 5.5 and 6.5, I have one observation and so on. And between 8.5 and 9.5, I have three observations. And here I have one and two, okay? So this is a histogram. It's not that cool because we don't have that many points. So how about I increase that to 100 and you can see that as I generate more red points on the x-axis here, um, like we get a, a fuller, fuller histogram. And then like, since we're working with the counts, like the Y axis is going to keep going up, but let's say we generate like a hundred points. You see that most points are around the 10, but that's not necessarily true. Like most points are around the 13. So although we are drawing from a, a normal distribution, it's not going to be a, the same perfect shape every time. Right? Especially like a hundred is a decent size sample, but like where it's not a, a million, it's not infinity. Right? And another thing that's going to influence the bin width is the like, let's say we call this W is the bin width. 
So the bin width is like max, minimum zero. Let's go like maximum uh, one in our case. So let's say we decrease the bin width. It's also going to change the, the size and shape of our histogram. But let's, let's keep the one for now. And one thing we can do is increase the not number of observations even further, right? But before we do that, let's, uh, we could also do, like right now we're at the count. So out of this 100 um, observations, I have 15 that are between 8.5 and 9.5. So that means I have 15% of my observations, right? Percent means per 100, because cent is 100 in French. So 8.5, so here if I go relative and I zoom in, I can just do the little magnifier zoom fit with a plus sign on the histogram. It should be at 0 0.15 and it is, right? Like the relative frequency of the observations in that bin is 0 0.15. And now this is starting to be very close to our normal distribution. So if we replot our normal distribution, it should start to look like it as we increase the number of observations. So let's put a thousand. You see that it's starting to be very close. And how about we shrink the bin width a bit, right? So or maybe I'll, I'll wait. So let's put 10,000. You're starting to see that the red line is going through the tops of the bins almost perfectly, like the middles of the bins. And if I shrink this even further and go with the density, you see that the red line is an approximation. It's a, a mathematical formula of a histogram, right? So the normal distribution can be used to generate random points. And then you can kind of reverse engineer it by building a histogram with those random points and see how they, it matches up with the normal distribution. So again, a normal distribution is most values are going to be around 10. And as you go further and further, you're less likely to generate those values. And the width of the, um, the normal distribution depends on the standard deviation. As you change the width, you, you get it wider. And as you slide the mean, then you slide the normal, the, 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 the bell curve, right? So if the mean is 10, the highest point is going to be around 10. If you put the mean as seven, most points are going to be around seven. And you could like shrink the sample and look at that for yourself. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick demo about random numbers, histograms, and distributions in Desmos. I certainly enjoyed learning about these things when I first found out about them. I was like, oh my God, this is so powerful and easy to use. So I hope that you use it by with yourself if you're a student or if, if you're a teacher, then you can use it with your students. That's super helpful. And I'm sure you'd also enjoy my other Desmos videos. So make sure to check those out. And I also happen to have a online course on Udemy on how to use Desmos as a student and teacher. So I'm sure you're going to like that one. Thanks for watching. And as always, thank you for doing the work.